Now, on to music. And I want to say before we get started, thank you for letting me take a, a station break to go fix something and come back and do our interview from one broadcaster to another. Mm -hmm. It's appreciated. Yes. <laughs> so music. Yes. Um, back in the early to mid 80s, there was a lot of good music going around. Um, not so much here in Plattsburgh, but Burlington had a very vibrant music scene happening. Um, but also you had Shom FM from yeah, Montreal, Shom, yeah. who always, they always played a lot of um, music that you wouldn't normally hear yeah. around here. I love We couldn't always get it in when I lived in Peru, but sometimes we could, and then you yeah. oh, it was so cool to hear Shom. Yeah. It's still cool to hear Shom. <laughs> I, I haven't heard, I haven't listened to Shom in God who knows how long. Um, matter of fact, I haven't listened to WIZN who knows how long. <laughs> um, nowadays, it's mainly jazz and classical music that I tend to listen to. Um, I'm getting fucking old. We're getting wise. It's not old. We're just wise. Yeah, but I brought along with me out of my collection. I'm excited. First of all. You heard, or at least saw, the Tom Cruise version of War of the Worlds, right? No, because I'm not a Tom Cruise fan. Okay. It wasn't that great. <laughs> Good that um, I don't feel the, bad. the original version and the Orson Welles Mercury Theater. I have that on record. <laughs> are classics. Yes, that I've heard. That, yes. that I've heard, but I've never seen War of the Worlds but, with Tom Cruise. Have you ever heard the musical version of know. War of the Worlds? Oh, narrated no. by Richard Are Burton. Are you serious? That is, I don't think I've heard of this. This is great. What year did this come out? This was released out in '78. Oh, I can see him doing a very good job with that. Yeah, and it's based solely on the H.G. Wells. As you notice, some of the songs and one of them, the Moody Blues, Forever Autumn. Oh. It was produced, I don't know if it has the inner one. Yes, it does. It was the executive producer was Justin Hayward, sung by Justin Hayward. Yeah, lead singer of the Moody Blues. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Phil Linott, that's the fella from um, he's from Thin Lizzy. Yep, The Spirit wow. of Man. Wow. David Axix, Brave New World. Oh wow, David Axix, a rock on. Mm hmm. So that's cool. So it's kind of like a rock and roll almost version of yeah. it. Yeah. Um. And I've heard of Forever, I've never listened to Forever Autumn, but I have done some research on, I like to research bands. Yeah, been, and, you know. and, and Forever Autumn was on the Moody Blues album. I thought so. Days of Future Past. Yeah, okay. Which All right. includes the classic Nights in White, White Satin. Satin. And for people nowadays, when they hear that song, there is the spoken word per portion of it is not there. Okay. The album version has the spoken word version. Okay. So is it the one that was released like on the single doesn't have it? Right. Oh, that's, I see that's the one thing I don't necessarily agree with how things were chopped up back in the day for single release. Yeah. And that's the only version that people hear yeah. is that single release. Right, right. The album version with that spoken word portion is the best. I, I have not, I wonder, I don't think I have that on record. I'd have to look. Sometimes I buy records in hopes that I'm going to listen to them someday. So mm -hmm. I have them, you know, yeah. I'll have to listen because I don't know. But, um, I like that you still have cassettes. I have all my cassettes. Yes. And I have nothing to play them on. <laughs> Actually, you know, there's this thing that you can buy. It is a tape converter. So you can convert, convert from tape to uh, MP3. Actually, at one point in time, 
before my tape deck shit the bed <laughs> and my turntable belt just oh yeah turned to dust yep. i was working on converting all my cassettes and records into mp3s oh, okay i uploaded them to amazon music because i have an account with them then amazon being the assholes that they are decided well, we're going to make people pay for listening to their own music. Oh, weird. Yes. So right now, all that music is locked on my Amazon account that I cannot access because I do not have a subscription to Amazon Music. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I will say this. If you, I, have a, I can link you. It was only like, it's gone on sale. I think I got it for 75 bucks, but I think it's super cheap now. You can use it as a, you can use it as a, like a Walkman. Too. And you can convert digital to, to digital. Yeah. So, you know, that way, if you don't have a cassette player, but you know, honestly, you're better off to go to a yard sale and buy a boombox with a cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And hope <laughs> that, it sounds better and, that and, way. And hope that these haven't deteriorated over time. That's the thing. you know. And that, I, that's the problem with analog tapes. And I have almost every tape I've ever had owned in my life, except for the ones that got eaten to the point where I couldn't fix yeah. them anymore. But also... Down in here, we have oh, The Cure. Best album ever. It's a great the, compilation. I love that. Yep. And the album, that the vinyl version, they, they named, when they released their Greatest Hits package, they gave each one different names. This is called Standing on the Beach. Right. The vinyl one is called Staring at the Beach. And the CD Staring at the Sea. Right. Because I have the CD. Right. I never knew that. That's cool. But this has the B-sides. Right. And, and it's got stuff from maybe, is that the, got the stuff from Japanese Whispers and all that stuff on it? I don't, no. I don't know, but, but. Oh, unavailable oh. B-sides. But the song that was the popular one was the one that they banned in England. Which one was that? Killing an Arab. Oh, right, right, right. That became their popular one. Right. That was, role, they played that on Shalm a lot. Really? Yes. That's crazy. I didn't know. Yes. I didn't get into The Cure until I was probably in my early teens so I had to catch up on a lot of stuff when yes. I got into them but that's a band that Saga. Did, did you hear them on show as a kid because they're Canadian right um uh, are they Canadian I'm not really sure if they're Canadian or British because I'd have never I had never heard of them until a friend of mine who loves them mentioned them to me mm -hmm. they're great Oh, yeah. They're great. I want to know, like, one song, though. One or two songs. Yep. But this is their live album in transit. That's cool. But their first four albums were chapters. I love that. Actually, yeah, the first four albums, the first ones, and each album of the four had chapters. That's neat. So you put them all together, each track that was a chapter, you have a story. I love that kind of See, I'm a big progressive rock fan, and that is so nerdy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I but, love that. And we all love Warren yeah. Zevon. Oh. Werewolves of London, but also... Lawyers, Guns, and Money. Lawyers, Guns, and Money. <laughs> That's and, all I know. That's all I know. And Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. I forgot about that song. Oh my god. I used to hear that on The Wizard back in the day, I think. Mm -hmm. I think. It was, they played it on Shalm and The Wizard. I remember that as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, because today is a full moon, that's why I, if I, I don't play stuff from the 70s as much anymore, but I would have definitely played Wizards mm -hmm. of London. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't know much about him. I was told that the last album that he did before he passed away is amazing, and I've listened to a little bit of that. I just think he's got a great sense of humor. Yes, yes, he does. And when he released uh, Werewolves of London, 
everybody loved it. It's funny. It's a funny song. Yeah, it is. It's got so many great quotable lines, you know, like, the little lady got me laid late last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so that is so fast and hard to say, you know? Yeah. It's like, it is so... Yeah. But, His hair was perfect. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> but... And I don't know if this band is German or British. German. German? Yep. Kraftwerk. Bon, 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 it's the auto bon. I'm the operator with my pocket calculator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. a Kraftwerk fan. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're fun. Like, so when I, the first thing I ever saw from Kraftwerk was I saw it on MTV and I saw a pocket calculator. And to, so by the way, today is uh, Embrace Your Geekiness Day in the, in the National Holidays mm -hmm. Day. So I remember seeing these guys and they're in like black turtlenecks and they're standing on a stage and they're like playing like calculator. It's, it's crazy. It's like, you know that song? So like, yeah. so they did so many weird like computer sounding and, and stuff. They, they were the, at the time they were the avant-garde yes, band when they it came to were. techno pop. And they were so cool. And I mean, they took things like, think about Autobahn. It's just like, do, 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 do. You know, it's just mm -hmm. so like, it's so progressive. And it just, it yeah. kind of makes you feel like you're Yeah, It's just like um, Devo. I love Devo. Yeah. You know, Devo, um, they did a lot of good songs. Um, they're, and it's a, one of their considered the best, but... It's never really been played, and that's, um, and I can only think, the, I don't know what really the song, but part of the lyrics is, and I'm terrible with re remembering lines. Um, yeah, but that's why I, 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 so you can do the movie side of things, and I can do, yes. I can do the music side of things. Twist these bars of steel away. I might have to Google that later. That's yes. not ringing a bell. Yeah, but my friend, when we always party, that was one of the songs that they played. Yeah, I, I, I like, I, I like, oh, is it? I like, um, oh gosh, Peekaboo. I like yeah. that song, Peekaboo. I can see you. Yeah, I like. I'm not. I, there's because I mean, I, it's great. Don't get me wrong, but there's so many other cooler songs. That yeah, you, don't yeah. Mean, you know, it's just like. Uh, their uh, remake version of Working in a oh, Coal Mine. Working in a Coal Mine. It's so which, like, which, doop, doop, you know. And if I'm right, I should have brought it. Soundtrack to Heavy Metal. I think that, I see, okay, I never have seen Heavy Metal. I know enough about it from people like telling me and like reading stuff. Like, I used to read Korean Magazine a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it, but man, is that soundtrack amazing. It is, it is. And the movie is really good. When they did Heavy Metal 2000, oh, I didn't it, it sucked. Was the soundtrack okay at least? Eh. That's too bad. Yeah. It, they that tried, soundtrack's they, they amazing. Tried, they tried to... How can I say it? Reinvent the wheel again? See, that's why I don't like to watch these remakes. Because I've already seen the original. Well, it was, it was it. A really a sequel, but it wasn't really a. Mm. It's like. Mm. Sometimes things should be left alone. Let yeah, them stand alone. Is especially what they are. seeing that when they did heavy metal, it was done in segments of different things based around the orb. Okay. Now, it started as a comic book, right? Heavy metal? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. back in the 70s. My friend Tommy, who owns Tommy's Toys and Comics, would be disappointed in me that I asked you that question. He thinks I should probably already know that by now. Yeah, <laughs> but, but he's uh, the one that turned me on a saga. So I, you know, thanks, yeah. Tommy. But um, also during the eighties, you had these different musicians from different bands coming together to what were known as power bands, mm -hmm. and one of them was Power Station. Be I know them because I my first favorite band on my own was Duran Duran. Mm -hmm. And is it Andy in there? Is Andy in that or Roger? I forget which one. One of the guys from Duran Duran is in yeah. that because it's also Robert Palmer, right? That's Andy. Yeah. yeah. That's Andy. Robert Palmer. I forget who he is. That's, he's, what was, is, is it two of them? Hold on. Is it, it two was, of them? Who is in the band? Okay, so it's two members of Duran Duran. So John and Andy are, are from Duran Duran. Yep. And uh, the other guy is Tony Thomas. I don't know him. I don't need him. But I mean, that song, that, I mean, when that came out, that, that yeah, was and, such a big sounding and, song. And the first single after that was the remake of 
Get it on. Bang and gone. T Rex. And they, I mean, I like T Rex. I don't know much about them. That's a band I'd like to explore more. But I can tell you, like, that song was just so, such a big sounding song. It's, you know, and I, I was like, okay, the boys from Duran Duran are in it, so I gotta pay attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a Simon LeBon girl, though. Yeah. But, uh, Bob Skaggs? I like him. I wish I knew more about him. Um, the song that he's most famous for is Little Shuffle. I love that. I love that song. I also like, um, I like Lowdown. Yep. This was, that's from a movie, right? Look What You've Done To Me? I don't know. I think that they put that in a movie. But I just like, I like his voice. And he, he tours a lot. And I think he'd be really a really fun show to see. Yeah. But I only know, that's the thing working in radio. A lot of times I only know the hits. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a band that really struck me. And I went deeper. Like Staley Dan for, is a good example of that. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, um. I could talk to Staley Dan all day. Continuing <laughs> down here. Naturally, oh, modern English. I had this. Depeche Mode. And yes, we are all saddened. Very much. Mm-hmm. And I... I, th I think that um, Andy Fletcher, I think that people all saw Dave, um, Dave as the lead singer and they, they focused on him, but you wouldn't have it if you didn't have Andy Fletcher. Andy Fletcher was the co-creator, you know? Yeah, He's, yeah. He defined that sound, and, and, that and, synthesizer sound. Yeah, and he was, you can say, the founding member of the founding members. Yeah, yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. and, and it's his, and like, in modern English, now I only know Melt With You. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. They put out several albums. This is one of them, Ricochet Days. Okay. I consider this to be one of their better. Um, they all kind of sound like that? Because I like it. I think they sound like breezy pop. I really I yeah, like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Oh, cool. I'm the, the No title, one ever gets the, to talk music like this with me. This the, is fun. The, the title track, Ricochet Days, mm -hmm. you have to listen to it. Okay. I, it was never released as a single. Is it one of those ones that you know should have been released? Yeah, because it, it's the one that, yeah, you should have freaking released that because <laughs> you want to know something, um, it would have been more popular. You know, I, I get that. I get that way. Especially some of my favorite bands. I'm like, why did you pick that as a single? Why? That's yeah. not, shouldn't they be the yeah. single? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where was I in but, that board meeting? You have to, yeah, and it's like, yeah, what are these producers thinking about? I think that, I because like, going back to Faith the More, I think that, when they were, you know, they they had Epic, and Epic was amazing, right? Oh, yeah. And then they came out two years later with Angel Dust, and that it was nothing like the, out the last. Yeah, album. because um, what song is that? Uh, Spiders from Mars, which is on Epic. That is a classic. Woodpecker from Mars. Woodpecker from Mars. Spiders or David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from but Mars. But no, Woodpecker yes. from Mars, it, and that's, I mean, it's an instrumental, and it's like, I mean, Roddy's like really doing it on the keyboard, mm -hmm. and it's synthy and creepy, mm -hmm. and I think that that's, it's funny that you say that, because if you, if you were to take the sound of Woodpeckers from Mars, it almost fits very well if you play them back to back. You have to ignore uh, Edge of the World at the end there, but um, it's such a, that's what they ended up sounding like more on Angel Dust. Mm -hmm. Kind of that creepy sort of thing, you know? Because mm -hmm. Angel Dust is a lot of creepy synthesizers. I just love that. Angel yeah. Dust is just an amazing album, period. Yeah. But, but you know, the real thing that has Epic, yeah, what, that what, and then they did War Pigs. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, you know? And I think, yeah. I think their version of War Pigs is superior. Yes, yes. Because Jim Martin was a heck of a guitar player. Yeah. Very grungy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is fun, Jamie. Oh, digging down even further. Hooray! Oh. The Knack. Okay. The Knack. And everybody remembers my Sharona. Or as some people would say, my Corona. Um, I know good girls don't. Yeah. But they released four albums. Okay. Get the Knack was one of them. Mm -hmm. That's the one I remember the most. Right. That's the one that everybody remembers. Um, there is a second album, which I don't have. This is their third album, Round Trip. Okay. The entire album sucks, except for one. Can I see if I can pick out which is it, what it was? It's good? Hmm. Is it She Likes the Beat? Nope. That's too bad. What is it? <sighs> I have to think here for a second. I think that would be a dance song, but maybe not. <laughs> uh, Sharona's selling up real estate, by the way, in California. That's her job now. 
She sells celebrity real estate. You can go to mysharona.com. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Now I have to listen to it and I don't have it. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but, um, is this this one? Is it? Oh yeah, now I know. Um, this and this is my personal favorite. Um, Siamese Twins, Me and the Monkey. Okay. That they should have released after My Sharona, and they never did. Right, and I think the next what was so what was first was it My Sharona then Good Girls Don't or just I don't honestly know. It was know. My Sharona and. Off this album was My Sharona and What Little Girls Do. Okay. They should have not released that one. They should have released Me and the Monkey. Gotcha. Because I think that, because I, I think sometimes, again, like they try so hard, but by they, I mean the producers and those in charge, yeah. trying to recreate that magic of the first one, and sometimes it just doesn't happen. But back in, they took a break. In 91, they released Serious Fun. I had no idea that they were still making music at that point. That's crazy. And this is the best of their albums. Maybe they needed the break. Mm-hmm. Because all the songs on this are really good. Because I like them because they're American rock. You know? Right. Kind of right. like how Cheap Trick is kind of that American rock. Right. You know? Right. I see your GTR tape. I'm excited to talk about that. Yep. And that featured Steve Hackett, Steve Howe, and the songs were... When the Heart Rules the Mind and the Hunter. And speaking of like super groups, I actually looked it up why they named themselves GTR. Because when you have a mixing board, it's named after the, the pot or the channel mm -hmm. that's guitar. Yeah. Why they're called GTR. Mm -hmm. See, I, I see Steve Hackett is Genesis, and I'm not, I don't really know much about Genesis. That was pre the three of them. Yeah. Um, but I love Yes. So I, I love Steve Howe. Yeah. Um, Genesis was originally. Peter Gabriel, Steve Hackett, Phil Collins, um, Mike Rutherford, and Tony Banks. That's right. I was forget Tony's keyboards, right? Yeah. I was forgetting him. And then they got, well, who, did he stick with them for the whole time? And then he left when it became, it, it all ended up becoming just the trio at the end, right? Yeah, and it, there, when it became Phil Collins and the other two. Brain fart on I know, I, I know it's Mike Rutherford, but I can't remember who the other one is. Tony Banks. Tony Banks was in the day. Oh, he was in the... Yes, yes, they, he then, was. They All released right. the album, and then there were three. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I see... The, I will be completely 100% honest. Like, because I was so spoiled by what... And I like 80s Genesis, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I love progressive rock. And people are like, oh, you must love Genesis. I'm like, not really. And they're like, but why? Because the Genesis I grew up on was the Genesis in the 80s, which is nothing like the Genesis of the 70s. Yeah. Not because, even close. Because I, I remember listening to The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. I never actually, I can't make it through that album. Is it good? It is good. Okay. I can't it's, take Peter it, Gabriel serious on these albums. I just can't. <laughs> but, um, and, um, what is it? Oh, a band? That came out in the 80s. I have them right here. Yes. They were compared very oh. closely to... Stripper and Jasper's Earl... Tear, right? Oh, no, that's Misplaced Childhood. Okay. That, yeah. All right. They, they were compared very closely to early Genesis. Do you and like these guys? I liked them when... Fish, a.k.a. Derek W. Deck... And that's fish, F I S H, not with a P H. <laughs> right. right. Was with them. Okay. When they, when fish left and they got Steve Hogarth. Yes. That's when it was like, <sighs> come on. The only song I know is Kaylee. Mm -hmm. um, I have listened to this album because a friend of mine, it's their favorite band, and mm -hmm. he said, please just listen to the album. And I'm like, I don't really, I cannot get into this band. Yeah. I want to get into this band, but I cannot. Their, their first album um, was really good. The second one was also good. They've got one called Fugazi. I know that, yep. right? Is, uh, let me is, think script, is Script for a Jester's Tear one of them? Yep. Okay. Script for a Jester's Tear, Fugazi, Fugazi. 
you literally, if you were to just listen to it, you would be completely lost. You have to literally sit down with the lyrics and One read. One of those. Right. And even then, you're like, <laughs> it's all <laughs> metaphors. Okay. Okay. The entire song is nothing but metaphors. See, I just couldn't get into them, and I disappointed my friend. If he's listening, sorry, Sean, I just don't really like <laughs> But um, there's also oh, I love Berlin. Them. Berlin's great. This was their first album, I Pleasure love, Victim. I love, I think I might have, is, that, is the Metro on that? Metro and Sex, I Am. Oh, I, and that's this, a great and, song. And, and the single version is shorter than the album version. Interesting. Because... The is it album, because of some of the lyrics of it? And at the end, the girl says, I think I had an orgasm. Aha. Uh because -huh. see, speaking of, I, every, I can bring everything back to Mike Patton eventually. So Mike Patton was in a, a, a short-lived project called Lovage. Mm -hmm. And they, he, and another, he and a woman, I can't, oh, Jennifer, what's her last name right now? Jennifer Charles. Mm -hmm. They do a version of that. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a boy and a girl voice. It is so sexy. And, that, and that's how it was done. <laughs> that, that's, that's, how, how, that's how they did how Berlin did that. Song. I've never heard that album. I, I won't I see I bought an eighties compilation as a kid and I and the Metro was on it. I didn't hear Sex Ima until I heard Love is Just Version and then I went back to listen to the original. Mm -hmm. But Oh. We would have been such good friends in high school. <laughs> but like I say, back in the eighties there was um a really good music scene in Burlington. Um I have um a couple of the uh Albums from a couple of the Burlington bands from back then. I don't what, know anything about the Burlington scene until it but, became like more of a punk rock scene. Yeah, but actually, uh, back in the early '80s, it was reggae punk type. Right. Um, well, I meant for my friends' sake. When my friends started playing, when we all got of age and could go up there and play music. <laughs> yeah, but um, the bands that were really popular at the time. Excluding fish, right? Were the wards? Oh, they were punk, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. The decents. I don't. I've never heard of them. You've heard, you know, the newspaper uh, Seven Days. Mm -hmm. The lead vocalist, the female lead vocalist from the band The Decents, started that band. That's started. cool. But um, one, I'm all for female-led punk rock. For real. But, um, Pinhead. I, I don't know this. I mean, I know mm -hmm. Pinhead from, like, the movie Pinhead. Like, you know, what is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, but also in the, movie, the first Back to the Future movie. Yeah? What was the name of Michael J. Fox's band? I don't remember. Pinhead. Is it? Yes. Did they name themselves after it, or were they no. the band? No. That's cool. Just coincidental. Interesting. But this... The mutants. I yeah. love it. Don't dance. Nature. Be a good citizen. Who me? I love it. I love it. I love that there's only six songs on the album too. Yes. <laughs> but that's funny. You can listen to this. Okay. So here Actually you... I my my tape player is disconnected at the moment at my house and if, I will promise you if that goes into my house it's a vortex. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I have to, I, I did some rear but when I'm ready, I will ask for it back. Or, oh. you know, because honestly, I have, I hate borrowing things because I have so much music. I have kept some of these records for four years because I had them amongst my stuff. <laughs> and I was like, I brought them back to her house. I'm like, you know, I've had your records for a while. I'm really sorry. And they probably were like, you did? There were Devo records too. Oh, gee. And, and one Dead Kennedys. Oh, gee. <laughs> that, that was a good good. That was a good so you mentioned the wards. So see, I used to go to the, the punk rock shows at the Crack House in Plattsburgh, up in Mor actually Morrisonville. And I want to say that's where I first heard of them. I think somebody who used to be in the wards played in a band up there. Because they had bands from all over, the, all the punk mm -hmm. and hardcore bands from all over the Northeast would go to these punk, right. these punk house shows. And I, I want to say that's where I've heard the wards, but I don't know if I've ever actually listened to them. They, they were very popular. Um, at the time, they always played at this one bar, which was on the corner of Maine and I could say 
Pine Street. You know, okay. Pine Street. All okay. right. The bar was called R.W. Hunt's Mining Company. They were in the downstairs in the basement. I love the name of that bar. And um, the song that they are very well known for, probably even to this day, is Weapons Factory. No idea. Um, another Burlington band teamed up with them years later to remake that. Oh, fun. And both versions are really good. See, I like I, I like I like I was talking to someone recently about the the club. Um, what's the was it two forty two, the punk club two forty two Maine. Okay. That Bernie Sanders started. I had never got to go there, and, it, and like for years, it's like this punk mecca in the Northeast, and I never got to go as a kid, and I'm kind of resentful. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted uh, to go. But um, now for the vinyl. I'm excited about this. The vinyl. Okay. Ugh. How am I doing? Did you expect to stump me more than this? No. Because okay. I already don't know what this is. Okay. No idea. Canadian band. Okay. Street heart. My sister, and I got these from my sister, and she was really stupid, her and her husband at the time, because they had all these records, and they, I had this cheap-ass cabinet. Right. And they're like, oh, we really like that. It's like, okay. How about we make a trade? All your records for that cabinet. They're like, sure. It's like, you guys are fucking idiots. You know how much <laughs> value those records are? Oh, my God. And, like, the cabinet I could have just sold for 10 bucks. Right. <laughs> like, I think you got the better end of the deal. But, and they still stayed in the family. Right. But my sister was a big fan of Streetheart. Never heard of this band. They were before Loverboy. Oh. A few of the members, a few of the members, a couple of the members went on to form Loverboy. Okay. Keith Shields. Okay. And the guy named Spider. Help form Lover Boy. Okay. The funny thing is, this is my second conversation about Lover Boy today. I kid you not. Yeah. Which is just weird. <laughs> but they only released one album here in the States. Huh. But I have all their albums to date. And this. That's not, the names of this sounds familiar, but I don't know why. They, this was a national release. Their album from the greenhouse. They are, at the time, from Los Angeles, California. Are they punks or that like? They were just a regular rock band. I don't. And the song that got them noticed was from the greenhouse. The title track. Okay, 1988. I don't know. Huh. I'll have to check that one out. Cause yeah, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know why. And when they really get this, when they released that song out, a lot of people thought it was Pink Floyd. That's, That's how close it was. It's like That's hilarious. It's like um oh when Queen's Reich mm -hmm. released the song Silent Lucidity, everybody thought that now that you mention it. People thought that it was Pink Floyd. Now that you mention it, it sounds like Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, so what's on this? I see Beggar's Banquet, and I loved a lot of Beggar's Banquet bands. Okay. Vertigo is a record label. Okay. That, you, I, that I think I know. But this is their sampler. So who's on it? Oh, ABC, all my favorites. A, ABC, Big Country, Boomtown Rats. Oh, wow. A lot the of cult, stuff. Kelvin Rollin and the Dixie Midnight Runners. I played Escort Works today, actually. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, Mad World, I love this. Gene Loves Jezebel. Gene loves Jezebel. This More Recoil. These guys I love. Tones on Tail. Mm -hmm. I love them. Rubber Rodeo. Oh, this is neat. Mark Knopfler. That's neat. Because I've heard I've heard of the Vertigo record label, and I I but I know I know Beggar's Banquet because um, Bauhaus is on Beggar's Banquet. Right. 
Like, but oh, this is great. That record company, the record label is no longer. No? That's I'm pretty bad. sure. That's too bad. Uh, yeah. Oh, these guys I love. The waitresses. I love these guys. The waitresses. Got good saxophones. My, my, you got all yep, this great. My friend uh, who used to DJ, he turned me on to them. Let me see if my favorite song is on this, on this one. Like I said, um, okay, I recommend this album. Go listen to the song "No Guilt." No guilt. It's about life after a breakup. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. But um, I know they're, they're, like, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's the one that got them noticed. And I met. I believe this is Chris. I, the bay, Chris Butler, I think that's him right there. I met him. Mm -hmm. uh, he played in a band that I saw, and I got to meet him. So he was very mm -hmm. nice to me. I was very overwhelmed. <laughs> but one of oh, I love him. Chris Berg, this is Spanish great Trains and Other Stories, one of his finest albums. I used to babysit for a stripper, and she turned me on to him. <laughs> <laughs> Not for, for her, I babysat for yeah. her children, but, but when I was um, 14. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this one's a good one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the funny thing about this, so that's why she turned me on to this. The song in here called Patricia the Stripper. Yes. And her name wasn't Patricia, but that's why she bought the album. And that's how I heard this album because I'm 14 years old and she's, uh, you know, I'm watching her children. She's going to Plattsburgh to dance at the Karina. And oh, she would come home at like three, four o'clock in the morning and, you know, pay me out and I would go home. Yeah. So, yep, that's why that's funny. And, oh, I won't say her name in case I won't say her name, but. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for, she also, that woman also taught me how to do beating and taught me how to make jewelry. She was a great lady. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Spanish Train. Spanish Train's good. Yeah, Just Another Poor Boy. Classic song. Yeah, this is a good one. Yep. So good. That's hilarious. <laughs> Thanks for the nice little memory. Yes. Oh, this is a good album. And this, Deja Vu. Ooh, it's got one of my favorite songs. And, and I was looking at it earlier. It wasn't just Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. They had two other people on that. I never it, paid attention to it, right? You're right. Who, who are these guys? I don't know. Derry, Derek, Dallas Taylor and Gary Reeves, right? Yeah. No idea. Yeah. I think Carry On's on this song, or in this album, and I like that. Mm hmm That's a big Screw You song, too. I love it. Yeah, oh, I yeah. I think, is Carry On on this? Am I crazy? Um, um, let's see here. Carry On. Yep. Oh, that is such an F you song. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of good songs on this, but that's I love that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then oh, Jim. Jim Croce. Reminds me of my dad growing up. My dad mm -hmm. liked him a lot, or does like him. And I think this has, yep, Big Bad Leroy Brown. Yes. So what else does it have in here, too? Roller Derby Queen I like quite a bit, too. Mm -hmm. um, but I think out of all of these, though, my favorite is One Less Set of Footsteps. Um, uh, if that's the way that you want it, that's the way I want it more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. Oh, but Spencer little, Davis. Little Quirk. Stevie Winwood in the front and center. Yes, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm a man, I'm a man, and I love you so. <laughs> I, I didn't. This was released back. Oh, God. In the 60s. This is the original. That's good. I, I like them. Yep. Yeah. And. Yeah. And I didn't know. Of, Spencer Davis group until I heard Stevie Winwood. Okay, then did you go back and? Mm hmm. But. Oh, Harlequin. Did you go, did you find these on Shome? I listened to them on Shome. I have a listener named Denny. Mm hmm. That loves Harlequin and bought me. I don't know what album. I, 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 I they're in the back. He bought me a couple of their albums. I have yet to listen to them. Yeah. But they're good. I like what mm -hmm. I what I've heard. I've really liked. Oh, they yeah. were huge in Canada. Oh yeah, they were really big. Just like with Streetheart. Yeah. Um, another one that was really popular up in Canada was the band Toronto. Okay. And Triumph. Triumph yep. was big too. Right. But Toronto, I've never, I've never heard that. But but the thing is, it's like you know, that's why Shome was really cool. Like I usually can tell when people tell me bands that they like. I'm like, you listen to Shome mm -hmm. because they played these. These bands were like, you know, we were down oh, yeah. here playing like the Eagles and things, and they were too. Yeah. Those are like. The big Canadian, Canadian bands, rock. yeah. Canadian and rock. That's the good thing about Canadian radio is they, they definitely expose the bands up there a lot. It's, it's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, oh, Donovan. Donovan. I love Donovan. Donovan. Which album? I don't think I have this one. What was in so Evermore? Nice. The song that he's oh. best known for is Atlantis. I love Atlantis. Uh, Catch the Winds on here too. I like that. I mm. like Collars too. Oh. Where Your Love Like Heaven is one of my favorites. Mm hmm. Oh, my, my main Fagan. man, Mr. Donald Fagan. Walking Through Raindrops the is first, my favorite. Yep. The first single that he did after. Um, shit. What band was he? Steely Dan. Steely Dan. That's it. Jesus. But yeah, that's a, I, I have that same microphone in the back. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> on this, um, IGY I is the big popular one, right? Yep. New Frontiers is really good. Yes, this is a, this is my favorite though, because it's like so. It, it's, it sounds a lot like a Steely Dan song. Well, I mean, they all sound like Steely Dan songs because he has such a unique voice, you know. Yeah. Yep. But I, I this is a great album. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of people bought this too, and I, it's I, it's it's good. It's a good album. Right. Yeah. But um, of oh! course. This is my theme song. Yep. So when Leslie I Gore. when I used to make mistakes when we were doing I did a different format show when we first started, and every time I would make a mistake, the song's very short, and I I would be not timed incorrectly. So I would play sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows to the point where I listeners were bringing me lollipops because it was it was a, it was a running joke for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> oh, neat. Safaris, wipeout. My my mom dated the drummer of this band. <laughs> My mom used to work at the in the mess <coughs> hall at the base. Yeah, and he was stationed here. Mm -hmm. And they went on a couple of dates, mm -hmm. and she said he was a pain in the ass. And I, when I first started working at uh, what my other station was, I almost said the name. Um, I had a guy request this because he's like, you know, Surfer Joe, and I said, no, I don't know Surfer Joe, and this is, Surfer Joe is a great song, but but wipeouts where it's at. But yeah, so that that oh my god. I'm sorry for telling your stories, Connie. But yes, my mother went on a few dates with the drummer from this band. <laughs> You're bringing me back all these great memories, Jamie. Yeah. Ta -ta. Oh, nice. The party is over. I don't know a lot about these guys. I wish they, I did, though. They put out several albums. Um, British band, but I know it's, Talk Talk. The entire album is good. I, I know um, It's My Life. And that's about it. That was off their second album. Is it? I okay. I like their version. I think, I even think, mm -hmm. no doubt, did a decent version of it too. Mm -hmm. Billy Thorpe. Nope. Children of the Sun. He, from what I can ascertain, is a Canadian artist. Okay. He never made it big here in the States, but his best song was Children of the Sun. Okay. Looks like it'd be up my alley just by looking at it. Mm hmm. Cool. And naturally. Oh, the Bee Gees. Bee Gees, early Bee Gees. Trafalgar. What's on this one? Oh, Had He Been Broken Heart. Okay, yeah, so this is the early, early stuff. Mm hmm. Oh, I think people just forget and think they were only disco, but they're not. No, no. I love Bee Gees. Right, You're bringing back. This is, I'm, this is, I, I've done a lot of interviews and stuff, but this is the coolest one because I don't ever get to talk like this about music. Oh. Dave, was that? Yes. Fun. Uh, I only take five though. Yeah. Not gonna lie. My stepdad. Not my first stepdad, my current one. Um, <laughs> my first stepdad is how we got to Plattsburgh. Gotcha. Yeah. He is a big Dave Brubeck fan. Um. During the when he was in college back in the 50s, but also during the 60s and into the 70s, he played slide trombone oh, okay. for a big band oh, here, cool. here in Plattsburgh. Okay. And um, they would play a lot of the classic stuff, right. like Dave Brubeck um, and others. And um, this is out of his collection. That makes it makes it more special. Mm -hmm. I know. I have some of my grandfather's records, and it's for the mm -hmm. same reason. Mm -hmm. But the band. That oh, I this is the that. band. Yep. Get in trouble. Oh, that's neat. I gotta look them up because I did not. That is a neat story. And. And that's the lady. Yep. Peg Tassie. That's neat. If you notice, Pamela Paulson. No, wait a minute. 
No, it was Pamela Polson who helped. Peg Tassie and Pamela Polson were ones that started Seven Days. Right. But vocals, Jim Ryan, um, they all went on to do other things. But they released a couple albums. This is one of them. But um, that's neat. And I see, like, I see they recorded in Ferrisburg. That's cool. Yeah. But the song that got played a lot on WIZN at the time was compared to you. Okay. That's neat. That's an, I, I, I don't know much about Brit. Like, I know a little more, obviously more about Plattsburgh's music scene, but I know nothing. Mm -hmm. of, really, when it, comparatively, I know nothing about that. Don't know if you ever heard of this band. I've only heard of the album, uh, the, what do you call it, um, the record label called Rough Trade. Rough Trade. This is the band Rough Trade. Never, well, I don't think so. Carol Polk. Mm -hmm. And it's Carol Polk and I can't think of the guy's name, but he passed away years upon years ago. I don't think I... That's, are they English? They look English. They're Canadian. They're Canadian, okay. They look, um, <laughs> but it, I, you can, it's got, they've got that very uh, mid-80s outfit with the... Yeah, that's <laughs> when they were really popular in Canada. Um, they're, the song, they're, song that they're well known for is It's a Jungle, which is off their other album that I don't have. <laughs> I know these guys. The Romantics. I always like those their outfits on that album cover. Yeah. Good British band. It's so classy with their red leather. Mm-hmm. That was I like that they, they they just I just like their style. I mean I like their music too, but you just you know mm -hmm. He looks too freaking serious right there. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh Peter Gordon. Mm-hmm. Oh beautiful. I like I don't actually know any of this. Oh, I know Woman. That's the only song I yeah. know off this. Oh, I like Peter and Gordon. Mm -hmm. I like all that British Invasion stuff. Outside the Beatles. There was a movie released a few years back called 310 to Yuma. Interesting. Okay, I remember. I, I, I don't, obviously I've never seen it. Because yeah, I I, I've never seen it But uh, I remember, I, okay, I, I remember seeing Which kind of something. struck me as... That's funny. Interesting. Um, but, yes. The Moody Blues. Seven Soldier. What's on this album? Let me see. Because I was turned on to... Oh, I'm just a singer. Okay. I, I did a Me and You and Music with a gentleman, and he turned... Oh, oh, oh we got to talk about that. Um, and he turned me on to a song, Talking Out of Turn, I think it is, by yes. the Moody Blues. Is that a beautiful song or what? And that, that mm. I, I don't know that, enough that, about these guys, but I that, like everything that, I That was to. on their later album. Okay. Oh, I thought it was such a pretty song. Yeah. It was such a, a pretty song. It was off one of their later albums. This is one of their older albums. Yeah, I, I, this, I, I, I don't, you know, the cool yeah, thing. 72. You know, the thing about Moody Blues is I didn't know they really existed but until, like, when I was a kid, they had, like, Wildest Dream, and, you know, and they had, um, I know you're out there somewhere. They're 80s hits. Yeah. So when I'm like, wait, these guys have done other stuff too. I had no yeah. idea. I'm little, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like um, their album, Days of Futures Past. Right. You have to listen to the entire album. There are some that you have to do that with. Mm-hmm. And I think, and there, it, it's a ritual, like mm -hmm. flipping the record, you know, it's a ritual. Mm -hmm. That's why we were talking about Roxy Music's Avalon before we got started. Like that's, yeah. If I start listening to that album, and I don't like to listen to it any other way than on record, and I have it other ways, yeah. but I like to listen to it on record. Yeah. Oh. Get the crackle. Mm -hmm. But, and, that, and, that's and, my and, 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 and before you say anything, oh, that's my I got I on your Facebook post <laughs> that at one point you met one of the members. I've met two. Two? I've met two. I've met Mickey and Mike. I met Mike a few months before he died. Mm -hmm. And I met Mickey uh, a little bit beginning of this year. Um, Mike Nesbitt is my favorite monkey, but he's also one of my favorite musicians of all time. Mm -hmm. And to have a conversation with Mike Nesbitt, like if you would have told eight-year-old me that there would be a technology where I could talk to a rock star through the computer, I wouldn't have believed you, but that I'd be sitting in my... And he, he made fun of my knickknacks on my shelf. <laughs> Mike Nesmith. <coughs> and one of the things he said is because like, somebody got me a, a meet and greet. So we had like 10, 15 minutes with him. Um, and both of them, I talked to both. And I was super psyched about the Mike one. And 
It was so, he asked me, he asked me like, uh, just like, you know, talk to me about radio and he's, he just did this really interesting, like, um, kind of like an ID for us. Like, in the, if you're listening to the sound of my voice or whatever, but the last thing he said at the end of it was, I'll see you when I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, um, after the monkeys broke up back way back when Mike Nesman did a version of Godzilla. And it was the video for that was funny. It's hilarious. Because they called stepping. Yeah. And, and you would see he was playing and all that. And then the camera came down yep. and he's wearing these Godzilla boots. Her name was Rodan mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she lived in the meadows of Japan. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh yeah. Oh wonderful. Another my favorite monkey. see my favorite albums, my favorite songs on this album. Uh I like Writing Wrongs. I like P.O. Box on eight four seven. I like actually I like just about every song on this mm -hmm. album. I don't really like Dream World because I started out being a fan of mm -hmm. dating first and then I got over that. Yeah. This album is interesting. Yeah. Though a little bit of interesting trivia. We all know that David Bowie's original name was David Jones. Mm -hmm. He had to change it because of Davy Jones. I actually have uh, an, an album of David Bowie's is called Davy Jones and the King Bees because that was the name of his band and he was still Davy Jones. Mm -hmm. But uh, so this, the funny, okay, so this album, uh, I've had a song on this album stuck in my head for the last three days. Um, this album, they didn't even know this album was going to be released. They had done like some stuff and they like, oh wait, really? So this, this is only them singing on it. They they didn't play on the first two albums. They played on the third one, Headquarters. Um, but uh, they were, they were kind of like bewildered. Like you guys released this and huh? But I've had the song She going through my head for the last three days. And on that, <laughs> you posted out that you were into the premiere I of did. the movie She. And that is why it's going through my head. Because every time I read the word She, that song gets stuck in my head. And I noticed when we were having our little break, you have a promotional poster for that movie. I do. And Kate McGrew. Yes. Captain Janeway, Janeway was in it. <laughs> yes, and somebody actually asked how they got Captain Janeway to do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, my Star Trek lim uh, knowledge is limited. I watched a lot of the original series with my dad, but not remembering much. And I also, what is, um, is it Next Generation with Patrick mm -hmm. Stewart? Yeah. I watched more of that as a kid. And today's Patrick Stewart's birthday. Happy birthday, Patrick. <laughs> so another Moody Blues album. Yes, children, it, our, to our children's children. Children. It's on this one. Okay. I don't recognize anything on this album. And that's why they never released any singles off of Aww, it. Oh, that's too bad. He's got such a pretty voice. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't know that one. But that's a fun album. Little, little Feet. Okay, I don't know anything about this band other than them by name. Yep. Dixie Chicken. Dixie Chicken. Okay, I do know Dixie Chicken. I mm -hmm. heard that on The Wizard as a kid, too. Yep. That's where I first heard it. <laughs> and that's the third sign. Okay, so it's double up. All right. Yeah. And this... This looks like straight out of 1980s. What is that? It is. This is the soundtrack to the movie Less Than Zero. I thought Zero. that's what it was. Can I look at this? Because yes. there's a song that I swear is it's, on this. Stop. It's, okay. It's, it's actually on the record. Okay, this movie freaked me out so much as a little kid that it still haunts me to this day. This movie messes me up. Hazy Shade of Winners on this. Yes. Okay. Oh God, this is such a this, this is such a screwed up movie. <laughs> the soundtrack is good. Soundtrack's great. Mo movie's great too, though. It's just screwed up. I love I love this. See, I can't, re I swear, I, I, I can't remember what song it is. I've been convinced that there's a song on here that it's not. I always thought for some reason that Opportunities by Pet Shop Boys was on this, and I don't, I guess not. Yeah. But, oh yeah, um, this, because I, when I saw this, I'm like, wait, this looks like familiar to me. And then I realized my brain's like, yes, yeah, less than zero. 
And for anybody who uh, likes this or likes uh, the movie American Psycho, yeah. it's another done by the yeah. same dude, Freddie yeah. Stenhouse. And uh, Paola's? No. Canadian band. I like the name. I think it's funny. And, yeah. Well, the name is taken from when organized crime figures pay off oh. politicians. It's called Paola. Got you. And there was some Paola going on radio, too, back in the day. Yes. And that's another reason why, too. But... They have no stranger to danger. That I've never heard of. Romance. Eyes of a Stranger. It's produced by Mick Ronson. He was a spider from Mars. Yeah. He plays Cute Boy. Interesting. I think he was in the Spiders from Mars. Interesting. Huh. Well, I don't know. That's romance. Cool. Romance. The song off this that was released. Eyes of a Stranger. That sounds familiar, but I don't know why. It was played a lot on Shome. Okay. Yeah, that's... And I told you that my family... Is this your family? ...has a musical background. Uh, Radio Flyer. That right there is my cousin Bill... I mean, my cousin David Wilson. Oh, my God. I love that. He played the mandolin. Yes. He can play guitar... Bass, you name it. I love that they named it after the Radio Flyer Wagons, too. That's yeah, and they had to get permission from the company to do that. That's cool. And in doing that, whenever they did their shows, you could purchase a little Radio Flyer Wagon. I love a good gimmick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, see, bands don't do that stuff anymore. But if you notice, does this say it right here? Yeah. Springfield, Missouri, bass band. That's neat. And they did Wasted on the Way. <laughs> and it's a good version. That's funny. They did a good version of that. That's funny. But they also did a really good version of the Eagles' Seven Bridges Road. Interesting. Okay. All right. I could see that song. Because that's they do, cause the Eagles do that uh, a cappella, don't they? Yes. I could see that can see that lending itself to having a nice bluegrass background to it. Mm -hmm. And um, during the time that they were, when he was with them, they were they won awards. That's and one neat. of them was best up and coming bluegrass band. Does he still play music? Yes, he does. But he has a different band, and they play gospel and bluegrass. Fun. So. Oh, that's neat. I'm glad that you have the album. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And this. Okay, so that's we just talked about him, right? Yes, oh, this, oh, wow. Billy it's, Thorpe. Is this all Canadian bands? This is a or, variety of bands. Oh, Canadian, okay. Yeah, because British, Tommy Chuto is English. Or American, I mean, right? Yeah. But this was released out was back in the early 80s. Exposed to... Provocative new rock. <laughs> it cost... It's a two record album. It cost two dollars. Perfect. And oh yeah, because if you like the single, you might buy the whole album. Right, but it has a lot of at the time a lot of really good bands. Yeah. Billy Thorpe, Mary Ga Gary Merrick and the Fingers, Harlequin, the Hitmen, See, Holly. I, I know the, these guys. Holly and the Italians, Jojo Zepp and the Falcons, Karen DeVolt. You know who Karen DeVolt? She did vocals with. Meatwolf. Oh, okay. Or his song, Love It Dash. Oh, Paradise with the Dashboard Light? Right. Uh, okay. What is the OMD song on this? Because I only know If You Leave. That's all I know. Okay, so what songs we got here? Oh, Pretty in Pink. I, I saw the psychedelic version one. I don't know this one by Messages by them. Yep. Um, I know Sister Europe by the Furs. Mm hmm. Um, That's neat. Yeah, I, I saw the psychedelic person concert in Burlington once. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richard Butler was singing. Mm -hmm. And when he sang, a blob of spit landed out of his mouth and landed on my cheek and I almost died. <laughs> it was so gross. Because oh. I'm like, yay, the psychedelic foot. Oh. It wasn't like a lot. It was just enough. It was just yep. enough for me to gross out. But the covers of the album said that, that songs neat. were coming from. See, this 
Oh, I'm gonna see if you remember. Do you remember when they used to make the little bubble gums that were like this little Elk record albums like that size? Yeah. They, you can buy that. You can buy the, the th them on eBay. The the little thing. The gums aren't in them, I don't think. But yeah. I still love those. See, this is neat. I I usually whenever I can, if I'm picking records and I see, I like compilation albums like this because you you find out really neat stuff. I mean, like. I was mm -hmm. just talking to somebody about KTEL records and how that was kind of the same thing, you know, but they were a bit more expensive. Yeah. But I like this. This is because, you know, if, if you if you listen to the song and you like it enough, you go out and buy the whole record. And that's. Yeah, that was the idea back then. And that's good because it actually was reasonable. Yeah, and that's, you know? that's why they, that Vertigo mm -hmm. sampler, that was the whole idea behind oh, that, oh, too. Okay. See, I think samplers are great. I think a lot of people get hung up with, oh, I, I mean, I'm a completist from some albums. Yeah. But I I think a sampler is just dandy. I love that stuff. Because you get a nice... Oh, the birds. Yes. Turn, turn, turn. I love the birds. Let's see. That was one of the best known songs. Yeah. Written by Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not a Bob Dylan fan. I don't yeah. know. I yeah. Want, if I get one more person telling me my hair looks like Bob Dylan, I'm going to cry. Uh, I know it does. Oh, Mother Street a, Heart? Okay. Yeah. That was the last one that they actually. This was the first one that was ever released in the states. Dancing okay. with Danger. And I love the Pure Pop sticker that you bought it. Yes, yes. I and Pure it. Pop is still around. It is. I haven't been there a few years though. Yes. I don't but, get to Vermont very much anymore. Yeah. But oh. this is the rest of their collection. If you notice, Sweet. you can pick out the two members from the Love from Lover Boy if you, you can. I don't know. Okay, can I take a chance? Is it him? Yes. Okay, and there's That's another one. one. Yes. Is it him? Nope. Okay, who's the other one? Okay. That would have been my next guess because I like his pin on his coat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love their album Meanwhile, covers. Meanwhile, back in Paris, they did a really good version of the Stones Under My Thumb. Oh, nice. Is it more like a rock version of it? Mm-hmm. Cool. And, um, what other song was it? I think they did. It wasn't the Stones. Oh, I can't think of it. I have to think of it. Their album Un covers are great. Under Heaven Over Hell. Garon. No idea. But it looks like it's in the same vein as Marillion. <laughs> no, no, no. Garon. He was originally from Texas. Really? I like the sassy little stance he's got going on. Yeah, but... He got more recognized in Canada. Nice. <laughs> and, Happens and, like that sometimes, you yeah, know? Yeah, and if you were to mention him to anybody around here, it would be like, who? Don't, uh, Gowron, isn't that the character from Star Trek? Is that? I wouldn't even know. <laughs> yeah, but... What is the song here? This isn't it, but the, I have another one of his albums, and I think I may have called, um, oh shit, I forgot what the name of it is, but it was his first album that was released, Strange Animal. Okay. And that song from that album was his most popular. I've never, that's a brand new one for me. Yeah. But I, I'm taking a peek at the next one, and that's one of my favorite albums of all time. James Gang. I love the James Gang. On this album, I like Punk 49. I like... I really, really like The Ashes, The Rain, and I. I, mm -hmm. I like Joe Walsh. I think Joe Walsh is just something mm -hmm. else. But Tommy Dorsey. My mom liked Tommy Dorsey. I don't know a lot about big band music other than yep. names. Really good. Is this another one of your stepdads? Frank Sinatra. I'm not a fan. The early years. Are you a fan? I'm not a fan. I've always liked his music. Let's see what's on there. Is there anyone that I like on here? Hmm. Not really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like Ray, Ray Charles, Charles, though. Ray I like Charles. Charles a lot. Oh, yeah. Georgia on my mind. Beautiful song. Unchain my heart. With the road jack. Mm -hmm. I like Ray Charles. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot more than I like Frank Sinatra. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. For some reason, I think that my 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 complaint is I didn't grow up with Frank Sinatra, so he just by the time I knew who he was, he was in the tabloids for being kind of a mean drunk. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have that yeah. appreciation for his yeah. music. When I was growing up, he was mainly known for being with the Rat Pack. Right. Right, right. Sammy Davis Jr. and all those Dean guys. Dean Martin. What's, yeah. what's in the Rat Pack? There's one more, isn't there? Uh, it was uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin. Um, My memory's just not yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and uh, but Frank Sinatra was also known to have mob connections. Very much, very mm-hmm. much. I used to go to see this uh, go to go to this place in New Jersey called um, Maxwell's in Hoboken, and I used to park. I think it was on Frank Sinatra Boulevard <laughs> or Frank Sinatra Row. It was it was something yeah. fancy. It was Frank Sinatra something. Yeah, but, whoop, breaking it everything. But no, I. I, this honestly, like, I have done some interesting, like, stuff. Uh, this, this is what I do when I go to people's houses because I'm self conscious. I look through their like record collection and stuff. And the thing too you is know? that you can tell a lot about a person when you start seeing what they have. Um, it's your influences, like you know, even if like, I, like, it's stuff that made you when you were little. You know, like stuff mm-hmm. that you listened to that maybe. I, I mean, how many of your friends were probably listening to? Tommy Dorsey, but you listen to it because it's being played in the house. Yeah. And that's made you the music fan that you are. Yeah. You know, among my, uh, to this day, one of my favorite composer conductors is John Williams. Oh. Is that because of the Star Wars stuff? That's because I listened to his music when I was growing up. And that's because he did the soundtrack music to Lost in Space. Did he? I didn't he know did. that. The TV show? Yes. I didn't he know also that. did the soundtrack movie music to the movie Tora Tora Tora. I only know that by name, but I he also did. Did he do Jaws? Yes, he did. I've never seen Jaws. I've never did, seen anything. He also did Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That I've seen and I have that on record. My favorite part of that's the mashed potato thing. That's my favorite part. Mm-hmm. It's really the only part I remember. Yeah. Um, well, all nine of the Star Wars movies. Right. <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, and he started off doing commercial jingles. That's our summer, I suppose, right? Yeah. That's, and you know, if you think about it, because they don't, I mean, they don't make, things are not made the same way they were back, no. back then. And like, you know, jingles and things like that were, that was a huge expense to have like people singing your commercials and things oh, like yeah. that. So it was quite lucrative and you had to be good because you had to work on a deadline. Like, yeah. you know. My uh, cousin David, mm-hmm. he, when he wasn't playing with his band, and he probably still does, he does sound engineering and all mm-hmm. that for other musicians. But he also does jingles. It's great. It's, and it's great that there are still companies that do it. Because, you know, mm-hmm. he, big big companies still need jingles. But there's times where it was like houses. You know what I mean? Like in different cities. That's what they went to. That's their job is mm-hmm. they made jingles all day. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's not as much It's not as much as it, it used to be. But I love that there's still that. Especially, especially seeing that nowadays um, they tend to... Oh, am I in the sun? I'm not, am I yeah, going to fly? Sorry. <laughs> Well, both of us are. Okay. It's the way that the sun is coming yes, down. Yes, it's melting. We're melting. It's very. That's a. I should put my plants out here. They would love it, or they would completely burn, catch on fire. I don't know. Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, um, you think about when they were back in the old days of radio. Mm-hmm. Some of those jingles are now iconic. Oh sure. But you look at stuff nowadays and it's like why are they using the doobie brothers yes why are they doing a a messed up version of a police song and i honestly i think that it's it's kind of clever because it's already recognizable yes and that's what they're trying to do is go from what's recognizable but I, the one, the one that you know, always bothered me more than anything for all these years 
is the Oreo double stuff com com commercial that used um, Mr. Big Stuff by Gene King. Or Gene Knight, sorry. Mr. Big Stuff. And I'm like, this shouldn't be in a cookie commercial. I like that song. Stop it. Yes. So I, I get ticked off when I hear stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I we are, there's a, a song called Pink Moon by Nick Drake that I never would have heard if I never would have seen the TV commercial for a Volkswagen. It was a Volkswagen commercial that used that song. Mm -hmm. And I never would have even known that song if it wasn't used in that commercial. Oh, yeah. And it was good because what? then I started listening to Nick Drake. And I think that's where most people started listening to Nick Drake around my age yeah. because of that commercial. And, and some of these performers that we know today, they weren't really recognized. Right. But somehow their songs got onto commercials. Mm-hmm. It's lucrative. I mean, mm -hmm. if I were a songwriter, I probably would give it up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and be like, you want to buy my song for X amount of money? Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it lives on forever in certain way, you know? Yeah. But still, it's like, uh, like I say, the police song, Every Breath You Take. <sighs> there is a commercial that uses That's weird. that. I don't like that and, song. It's, and it's like, it's a good use of the song, right? But it's like, come on. That song creeps me out. <laughs> yeah, it's my least favorite but, song. But with the commercial, it's for Duck Duck Go. Oh, because they're the one. They're the private internet browser, and they're not being. They're out watching that, you what you're doing. Yeah, Clever. and the guy. Has the Google shirt on. Okay. And he's like, every step you take. On me, okay. And so it's kind of funny. It's a good use of the song, but right. it's like, I'm done with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the only Duck Duck Go commercial I've seen is I've seen the one where the guy's uh, going off grid and being chased by a bear. I've seen that one recently. Oh. Not their best work. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Hey, as somebody who works in advertisement, like sometimes your idea is great until you put it together. You're like, maybe I should have done that differently. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't work in TV because it's easier to put a radio oh, yeah. commercial back together. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I've thought about this and you, you probably saw the video that I did with Joe. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like mentioning to Joe that, yeah, we need to have car chases and explosions and small furry creatures. <laughs> And not what we did. And those small furry creatures aren't exactly small furry creatures. Okay. Zenith morphs. Oh. <laughs> From the alien movies. Yes. You also, I've never seen those either, but I know what those things are. Yeah. But I also, I, I don't know. I, I didn't see a lot of movies as a kid. Like, my friends make so much fun of me for it. I'm actually kind of self-conscious about it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I was too busy listening to records. I never went to the movies. <laughs> But I don't know. I, 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 I think that when there's stuff like, you know, that kind of thing, I think that you can make any idea work if you got the, if you have the, oh, yeah. if you got, if you have the idea and the creativity, you can make it work. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have to say that I, both Joe and I have gotten a lot of good responses. It's a great video. Yeah. It's um, a great video. Mm -hmm. And I recognize some of the people in it too. <laughs> oh, gee, really? So I tried to sneak the cameo of myself into it, but Joe was like, no, no, you can't. You've seen all the backs. It's like, Joe. <laughs> okay, let's put me just walking by the camera, okay? <laughs> Nobody there. You guys are back there. I'm walking in front of you guys, okay? <laughs> How about that as a cameo? It's kind of like your own Alfred Hitchcock thing. Like your little, that will, that's, your, that's your hallmark when you make mm -hmm. stuff. You just you walking by like a quick cameo. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But um, thanks a oh, lot. Thank uh, it's you. Been a this pleasure. was great. I love talking about music in any shape or form. And this was a nice exercise for me. Yeah. Because it's, it's stuff that I, you know, I don't know if it was, if you intended me to play 20 questions with it, but that's how I ran with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, just, just to talk. Just you know, and that, that's the thing is like, you opened up a lot of memories that I forgot. And, and it shows me just like, to prove a point from a couple of listeners that I've talked to that I should be playing more of the stuff that was played in the seventies and eighties on show because it made memories for people our age mm -hmm. and that will 
you know, just as much as Huey Lewis is nostalgic for some person, Saga is just as nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. So. But also, um, oh, can't think of their name right now. Give me a song, maybe I can. I came from the land down under. Oh, Men at Work. Yes. Like Though, I would not recommend that song. Mm -hmm. Not from their first album. Down by the Sea. Is that one off of... Um, it's off their first album. It's the first album, the one... Is that Cargo? Is Cargo yes. the first album? I like the first album. I love the album cover. My sister got both of them at the same time for Christmas, I think. So she got Cargo and... And, uh, and uh, oh, the yellow one. Yep. She got both of those. It's got the uh, the uh, amp on the front. Yeah. She got both of those. And I almost like Cargo better. Yep. I gotta listen to that again. I like Dr. Uh, Jekyll and Mr. Jive. Yep. I can't remember which album that one's on. Yeah. But, okay. um, yeah, Down by the Sea. Down by the Sea, I'll check it out. It's just like, um, Thomas Dolby. Oh, yes. And his song, One of Our Submarines is Missing. I don't know that one. It's off his song. I have one of his albums, I think. His, fir his first one that was released here in the States, Golden Age of Wireless. I do have that album. Is there a song, something... What is the song? There's another song on there. And I remember there was a video for it. And I looked for that song for years. And I find it by science. No, it's the no. other one. Oh, okay. There's another one off that album. And I looked for it for years. And I finally bought it on a record. And I'm like, I'm not hallucinating. That song actually existed. But yeah. I can't think of the name of it now. I will Google when we're done. <laughs> yeah. But um, thank goodness for Google, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, um, Another, an, an, another good one is John and Vangelis, the friends of Mr. Cairo. Oh, Vangelis, is, Vangelis just passed away. Yeah. I don't, I don't know much about Vangelis, other than like, what is it, Jerry, Jerry Sapphire, right? Yep. Um, I just know him by name and stuff, but now as, I, as he's passed away, I've been reading articles here and there, and I just didn't realize just how influential he was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. But uh, John Anderson and Val and Jealous released a few albums together. Like John Anderson, yes, John Anderson? Yes. Oh, I saw yes once. Yeah. Not with him, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but, this is one of the new guys. Yeah. But um, that entire album, Friends of Mr. Cairo, is good. Is that one of those you gotta listen to all the way through? Mm hmm. A um, couple good tracks besides Friends of Mr. Cairo is Mayflower. And, oh God, I had it in my head for a minute and it's gone. Shit. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. It's, it's late and we're getting melted by the yes, sun, vaporized. Yes. yes. Well, Jamie, this was one of the most fun interviews I've done. So I appreciate it. Mm hmm. This is great. Yeah. Yay. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I would love to talk music with you another time. But I have to move out of the sun right now before I yeah. see. I'm so pale. I might actually burst into flames if I'm yeah. not careful. And that's it, folks. <laughs>